diaspora is on our heart. We are expecting our brethren in the diaspora to come back and feel at home and uh, stay with us and help us also to develop this place. So uh, what we have here is not the, the money, it's not the technical know-how, but we have the lands. So our uh, duty is to make them available to our brethren that are coming so that uh, whatever uh, project and program they intend doing, uh, we will support and help them by making available our land resources uh, so that together our people can benefit from it. Basically, this is a farming community. There's not much uh, uh, economic community uh, activities here. We are a pure farming community. Of course, recently the community has improved a bit and uh, buying and selling is going on everywhere at every corner. We have a very big market here uh, in the traditional capital uh, that is on Thursdays and it's very big. Apart from that, the rest of the people are uh, farmers, I would say. The Kakum National Park uh, is made up of uh, four traditional areas. We have the Chufuhimai, uh, currently Chufuhimai traditional area. We have the Jukwa uh, Dentra traditional area. We have the uh, Asi uh, traditional area. And then we have Abra traditional area. So we are part of the uh, Kakum National Park concept. We are part of it. I would say that Central Region uh, cannot disassociate itself from uh, as to how our brethren departed from this beautiful continent. Central Region was uh, like a transit uh, place for many of our ancestors that were taken abroad. So Central Region stands not only to uh, uh, benefit, no, but historically Central Region is going to be healed. There's going to be some form of healing to the entire uh, region that the brethren that were taken away from us are now coming back to us. So we are privileged, I would say we are privileged. Apart from the emotional uh, and, the, and, the, and the psychological healing that is going to take place, the region is also going to benefit massively from uh, the activities, the program itself, which is going to take place in, uh, in this region. So we have a lot, to, a lot to benefit from, have a lot to benefit from. I would say to uh, the brethren in the diaspora that we love them very much, we are hopeful, uh, we, are, we are waiting patiently uh, and seeking uh, their support and their directives as to how this beautiful program initiated uh, together could be accomplished. And uh, we give our, our word and our promise that uh, we will do everything in our possible best to make it a success. We are embarking on transformation of Central Region in, in Ghana. And I would say uh, Wakanda City is a legacy project and stems out of the vision of the president uh, when he went to United States of America 2019 
to ask our brothers and sisters there to come back to the motherland. So the year of return was declared 2019. And so um, I said to myself and, and some of my chiefs said to ourselves, so what do we do to support this uh, Lord Double idea from the president? Uh, asking our brothers and sisters to come to the country, but they, they will come and they will go back if they don't have anywhere to stay. So that was the idea. But we started with Pan-African Village um, here. And as I speak, we have about 300 uh, diaspora in America, and not uh, necessarily from America, but uh, blacks all over the world are coming in, and we have about 300 of them uh, taking their lands here, and some have already started building their structures. But coming back to Wakanda, we also thought that um, together with some people from the United States, particularly uh, Her Excellency Kwam, to develop a smart city. In Cape Coast, we want to transform Cape Coast here. Cape Coast is a terrorist hub of this country, and we wanted to uh, add on and build a very smart city where those who are coming can come and settle and develop this country. For, for Together with them, we develop this country, particularly uh, Cape Coast area and Central Region in general. But Asebu is part of Abra Asebu Kamankasa district. But we, we are three traditional areas. We have the Asebu traditional area, that is where I am, and we have Abra, and then we have Kamankase. So we are talking about uh, Asebu traditional area, yes. Uh, what we're trying to do, like I said earlier on, uh, our brothers and sisters have been coming to this country all along, but they don't come and stay. They don't really, they just come for a short while and they're off, they, they, they go and particularly to Cape Coast area where we have the uh, tourist center. They will come and they will not spend even the night here. They will just come and go. So we thought that we need to develop Cape Coast area, have um, a well-planned city where people will want to stay forever and not just come and go. So Asebu and I, I the, the paramount chief of, of this place, have given up land for, for this to happen. So we are giving land, like I said, we've already uh, given land to um, the uh, African Americans and they have started building their houses. We are going to add on this Wakanda city. That, that's going to be a smart city that will embody a lot of um, facilities, schools, hospitals, um, settlements and uh, tourist areas and all that, hotel facilities and very smart city. My people have been educated and motivated um, about what is happening to, to our, our... See, Asebu used to host one of the biggest factory in the central region, a very old factory here. But unfortunately, we've lost that, that, that uh, project. So we don't have any employment avenues. So uh, what we are telling our people is that when we succeed bringing in our brothers and sisters and they come with their resources, um, knowledge, finances, everything, to come and set up industries, schools, whatever. And we open up the, the place. We have employment coming in, and people will have job to do. And if, if you have job to do, you have income to spend, and so on. So um, they should prepare their mind, and they should accept uh, our brothers and sisters who are coming. After all, they were part of us. Unfortunately, they were taken away some 400 years ago. We've now managed through the president bringing them back. So we have to work on them and make them feel at home. As Cebu, we are as Cebu. We, we settled here several, several years, uh, centuries ago. We are very, if we are talking about Santa region, we can say we are the aborigines of, of this place. And our main life, you know, livelihood is farming, uh, fishing. Uh, Mori is part of us and they are engaged in fishing and the rest of the towns within the terrestrial area are all farmers. We cultivate citrus, and lime, oranges, some oil palm and, and they also grow a lot of cassava here for other processes. So basically we are, we are farmers and fishermen. I said Baba Fee is a legendary person, uh, somebody who led the Asebu tribe to, to this place. Uh, and this back, we can trace that to the Exodus, when 
the Israelites were leaving uh, Egypt uh, for the um, uh, promised land. So the story says that um, I mean, if he, uh, you know, when they left, the Egyptians chased them up and wanted to bring them back to, to Egypt. Uh, it was during those processes when they got to the Red Sea, it was parted and, you know, according to the story, uh, most of the, when the Israelites passed through, the Egyptians entered and the sea swallowed them. But there was a battalion that was left behind and um, that couldn't, but when they realized that they've lost the race, they failed to go back to report to Pharaoh at the time, uh, to Egypt. So they took to um, the, the, the desert area, passed through Chad and came down. So the short of it is that Amenfi somehow led the group, uh, some of two, um, where we are now, uh, through Chad, Benin, Nigeria and Benin, and then coming through the sea. And they landed on the shores of Mori. Uh, we call a place called Fumfumpum. That is where we, we, we came from. And uh, through that, uh, Amenfi came with Kreja and their sister Amenfua. Uh, Amenfi came up here to Asebu, where we are now, and, and settled here. And Kreja settled at Mori. So the two of them, one was a farmer, the other was a fisherman. Kreja, fisherman, and Amenfi, uh, a farmer here. So he cultivated and, and in fact, controlled all these lands uh, from here up to Pla River. Uh, he was, as we are told, he, he was a giant and extraordinary person with extraordinary strength. And he left a lot of things here that testified that this guy was not just an ordinary person, but something special. Example, he planted a sword like Kwanfanache did in Kumasi, and that sword is at Abu Dunko, and nobody had been able to remove it before. Um, he sat on stones, and you can tra see the traces of his uh, foot and, and finger trips, uh, you know, prints on, on these stones, and, and several other things that he did. And so he's a legendary man to us, he's a giant, and we acknowledge him as a special person. <laughs>